Hey guys, welcome back to Backwoods Angler. Today I'm doing something a little bit different. I'm here in the lab doing some uh, behind the scenes filming. So, as you guys know, winter's arriving, but it's early ice. I mean, by me, you couldn't even find a lake of ice on a little trout pond. Not even in the backyard, but there's ice up north, and the um, biggest thing is how do you find it? Well, I'm going to give you guys kind of my step-by-step -step process on finding ice via satellites and then using kind of maps, weather, snow totals, and ways to predict the ice thickness. So I want to show you guys my process and uh, see if I can help you guys find some ice because I'm ice fishing this weekend and I'll probably be the first one in the state to do so. So I cannot wait. Let me show you guys what's up. So first, we start off here on Google Maps and we are going to zoom in and we're going to pick out where we want to fish. So, obviously we're in Maine. Now, this area where I'm located, there ain't no ice. But, you do this, you pick an area, let's say, let's check Depot Lake. This is a good one because it's way up north, we know it's a cooler climate up there, and um, it's shallow and we know it's legal to fish. There are yellow perch and I believe musky in there so if anyone wants some early musky go check this place out. I, I can't say if they're big but this would be a good lake to start. So now we've kind of decided our spots which normally I use Apple, not Apple, Google Maps not Google Earth due to the fact that I've got hundreds of pins saved but you guys don't need my spots, you can find them for yourself. So, now we're going to hop over to Zoom Earth, which on here, it's uh, Zoom Earth by Google, and you've got twice daily high definition, not super high, but satellite images. So, we're going to go to our current date, take it to the AM, maybe back one, okay. Let's find our next most recent day with no clouds. Okay, now you can see that the lake right there, it's frozen. It's no longer black. An open lake would be like this one, Ross, which has no snow on it. If it's white, it's frozen. Now, that doesn't mean it's safe. That does not mean it's safe. So, we're going to hop over to Soar Earth, where this has high definition images every five days which is great for um, getting to know the real details and what you're looking at, but it also doesn't help you when you're trying to figure out um, uh, but if there's cloud cover and it just happens to land every five days, then you're, there's nothing you can do. But we have now found Depot Lake again, and I like to use the Centennial Hub, it's free and it gives you some very good images, so you just go draw AOI, and you select the area, and you're waiting for satellites. And then it looks like we are lucky enough to have a clear image. Now, here's what I can read from this picture. The ice is thin. You can see that uh, it's open by the outlet, which makes sense, and you can see it's seeping even hardened on the snow. Now that was a flash freeze, so probably from a previous night of about 15 degrees out maybe, and then we got about three or four inches of snow on top. So that means there is not much ice, but the water is seeping on top. Now, you can also see all throughout it, there is water seeping through the cracks. Now at first you think, huh, there's water on the ice and it's thin, that's no good. But what that does mean is that this snow on top will soak the water up and it will flash freeze which means you'll go from a half an inch or an inch to three inches of ice overnight just due to a single snowfall which is super cool but you also have to be careful because sometimes it doesn't freeze all the way through the middle sometimes now here's the big fear is that the ice is a little thicker than you think and there's a little more snow than you think then, doesn't matter how cold it is, the snow being an insulator prevents it from actually freezing properly. And then, you show up and there's nothing to walk on. So this is the difference between showing up somewhere and having 
four inches of ice, six inches of ice, and one inch of ice, which one inch is a no-go. Now, on black ice, my perfect black ice minimum is two. For a mix of black and white, I prefer between three and four. That's what I personally feel safe on, knowing how I'm able to read the ice in person, but everybody is different. And please, please stay to the safer side of things. Now, we can then look, so let's say today is Thanksgiving Day. It just snowed, um, how much? What, what's the date today? I should know, I should know. Okay, so it snowed another probably six inches on that ice, so if it's thinnish ice, then that's all going to get soaked. In theory, we are going to find out this weekend, given different lake, but we will find out. Now, we consider, so we're going to be getting a bit more snow in here, so let's see what our snow totals were for this arc currently. So then we look, and the total snow on the ground up in this region of the state is, uh, what's that, four to six inches. So. Four to six is about where if you've got an inch to two inches of ice, depending on the weather, will likely have the water break through and soak it, which is a good thing. Now, when that flash freezes, you should have safe ice and a bit thicker of ice, but that's according to the weather. You get four to six inches and it's only going to be... 30 degrees out at night or 20 degrees out at night, this is not guaranteed. But we hop over to the weather for the area. So it's not going to be too cold tonight, but Friday night's going to be down to 5 degrees. And due to that, if there is any, any water on top of that ice making it slush, it will flash freeze into white ice. Now, it's not a guarantee that this ends up working out or being safe. This might be a four hour drive for no safe ice, but at the same time, it puts me on ice and having the opportunity at ice weeks prior to I'd have otherwise, maybe not weeks, but a week or two. And uh, you know, there's something about being the first guy out there that's the coolest thing, but you gotta do it safely. And that's kind of my process to figuring it all out, so. That's kind of the gist there, guys. I'm excited. We got a lot of cool stuff coming to the channel this winter. I am officially working with Frostbite now, so keep an eye out for some cool stuff there. Really excited. Those guys are awesome. Shout out to all of them. And, uh, yeah, so I'll be doing my first Ice in Maine video film this weekend, hopefully. If not, I'll have a follow-up on why I failed at my predictions. But, you know, we're going to be going out. We'll do a, probably a proper ice safety video there as like a sister video to this one because it all works together hand in hand, but that's my process for looking around, trying to figure, okay, is this going to be safe? There are other layers to it actually. We know I'll toss in a couple more. You can check on here and you can say, okay, how long has it been frozen? And you can look and you can see it's been frozen for a... Uh, little under a week maybe it's hard to tell okay it was not frozen on November 16th so there's also ways to do that you can check how long lakes have been frozen cross-reference it with the weather past weather snowfall totals there's a lot of cool resources and ways you can do this so that you don't have to go in blind because I have done many trips in my past flying out not flying driving and looking for ice and the lakes not even frozen and that's just the game you play until you step it up and use some technology. So at that, I'm excited for what we got ahead this winter. See you guys in the next one.